Welcome back, it is good to see you. I hope all is well. Today we're gonna to talk about how to improve our virtual offices. Many people are now working remote, and so this means that our office has become what's displayed on someone else's computer screen. When I first went remote, I didn't think much about this, and so a lot of times my background was distracting and potentially took away from the sessions that I was having. Now looking back, I realized there were things I could do and I have done to improve the quality of my virtual sessions just by thinking about what's displayed on someone else's screen. And today I wanna to help you do the same. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about five different ways we can do this. All of these methods are fairly low cost. Many of them are free. I'm gonna put links down below to some of the things I talk about and this video won't take too long, but before we get started, if you could go ahead and subscribe down below, that would be really helpful, but only if you want to, there is no pressure. Like I mentioned before, when I first went remote, I wasn't thinking much about my virtual office or the surroundings, and that's because I didn't think it was gonna add anything to my therapy sessions. Now, if you didn't know, I'm a therapist, and in that field, having a nice background is definitely not going to make or break an effective session. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure for most jobs, having a nice background is not going to make or break the effectiveness of your job. That being said though, after some time, I realized that although it might not make or break a session, my background and my virtual office could certainly distract from having a good therapy session. And that I did not wanna do. So what could be distracting? Well, a few things, you know, if for example, if my background is completely incongruent with the work I'm doing, well, that could potentially be distracting, right? So if I'm doing a therapy session and I use a virtual background and it's a baseball field, that's gonna be a bit distracting, right? Or if there's objects all around me, so if there's like chaos and mess in my background or whatever office I'm in, that could also be distracting. And so the whole goal of improving our virtual office space, at least from my perspective, is to eliminate as many distractions as possible. And so let's jump right in and talk about how to do that. So one of the first ways we can improve our virtual office is by improving our image quality. And the way we do this, you guessed it, is by improving our camera. Many people are probably using the built-in camera that's on their laptop, and this does get the job done. However, the quality of these cameras tends to be quite low. Now, one option is just to buy an external webcam. And if you choose to do this, I'm sure there are tons of options on Amazon and very helpful reviews to go along with it. However, if you don't wanna spend the money, you can actually use your smartphone as an external webcam. I'm gonna link a video down below that describes exactly how to do this. Now, I will say that I used to do this myself and the image quality that comes from your iPhone is drastically better than the one that comes from the camera built into your laptop. So I would encourage you to perhaps start using your iPhone or smartphone as your external webcam. You're really gonna like it. Another way we can improve our virtual offices is by improving the quality of our light. Now when we have better light, we have better image quality. And if you're like me, I used to just turn on my overhead lights, open up Zoom and start working. The image quality was very unflattering. It just didn't look, it was grainy and weird and it just, I could, weird shadows. It just, it didn't look very good. Now there are tons of options for light solutions on Amazon. There's things like ring lights and, and so many other options. I'll link a few down below. They're definitely worth checking out. However, I didn't ever use any of those solutions. I went with a free method. And one way that's free to improve your quality of light would be to strategically position yourself in front of a window. This is gonna give you a ton of natural light, which tends to light the scene very well. It'll light your face evenly, and it will really improve your image quality. So if you're able to, definitely go ahead and position yourself near a window, facing the window. So if I was to be sitting in front of a window now, it would be right in front of me. You're definitely gonna improve your image quality and your overall virtual office by doing this. And it's free. So this next topic on virtual office improvement is one of my favorites, and I often find that it's overlooked. And this is framing and composition. So framing is basically what is within the boundaries of your screen. And composition, it's basically like how you've decided to frame up your shot. So what angle are you shooting it at? Uh, what's in your scene? What are you looking at? There's tons of videos on framing and composition, which might be helpful to check out. But for the sake of this video, we'll just talk about a few things. 
Now, the first thing I think about when it comes to composition and having a virtual session is the height of my camera. Right, so when I first started having virtual sessions, I put my laptop right in front of me, obviously, and I'd have my session. Now this, this worked, but I would be looking down at the person, right, because that's where the camera was. And when you're looking down at someone, that's not really natural, right? You, you don't usually talk to people that way. You try to look at them in the eye. And so if you raise the camera up to eye level, it becomes much more natural. So camera height is very important. The other thing, it's kind of similar to this, is how far back do you want the camera to be? Right, so if you have the camera really close, you're gonna fill up the frame with mostly your head and your face and that kind of thing, which is okay, but it's not very natural. That's not how you talk to people in real life. So what I've done is I push the camera back in order to make it more realistic. So now within my frame, you can see a little bit of the desk I'm sitting at, you can see my background, and you can even see a cup of coffee sometimes if I have one. This makes it much more realistic. That's what it would look like if we were in person. So think about where you wanna position your camera to make the most realistic scene. So once we've decided on a camera position, we now need to think about what's being captured within the frame. And so for me, I try to reduce as many distractions as possible, which I've already said. So you can see behind me, it's a pretty plain white wall. There are some things back there, which we'll talk about in just a second, but there's a few things to keep in mind. One, it's fairly plain and it does not contrast with what I'm doing, right? So there's not like um, a baseball card collection behind me or a whole bunch of different, I don't know, memorabilia. There's nothing back there that's going to take away from what I'm talking to you about. At least I hope it looks like that. And two, everything is fairly plain. There's not too much back there. There's a few things that I've selected, but it's not very busy. And so this is just something to think about. Perhaps there's a mess behind us that we need to clean up, or maybe I need to angle myself in a way where I'm up against more of a plain wall. These are all personal preferences, but they're definitely things to think about. Now, a little bonus tip here is that if you're someone who uses a virtual background, uh, which I don't really use myself, but if you do, it's really helpful to have a background that is as plain as possible and that contrasts with you as much as possible. This way, the software is gonna be able to separate you really well. So for example, if you're wearing all black clothing, then the wall behind you should be white and there shouldn't be too much back there and vice versa. Another element that can really improve our virtual offices is to think about the objects that are displayed within our scene. I know we just talked about the background and composition and all that, but now we're talking specifically about the objects that we can see. So for example, I have a plant right here that you can see. I have another plant right up here. And obviously that plant is sitting on a shelf. And sometimes when I film these videos, a little bit more of that shelf can be seen and you can see books and, and other things like that. Now, when I think about practicals, each and everything that I, you can see in this scene, I've thought about. And there's a few principles I use when thinking about these things. And they're very similar to what we've been talking about. But the first thing is, I don't want my practicals to uh, clash with what I'm doing. So for example, if I have a pet lizard behind me as a practical, that might look cool, but that has nothing to do with the therapy that I'm doing and is probably gonna be really distracting. Also, I don't want too many practicals because that can also be distracting and be overkill. So as you can notice, I only have one plant here, another there, it's, it's pretty minimal. And there's a good number of open spaces like right around here. Um, so it's not too busy. That's another thing I've thought about. And now these are all, this is actually where it gets kind of fun because you can make it unique to your own style. You can think about different practicals that kind of fit who you are or what you're doing. Um, and there's a whole bunch of different options that you can go with. So some people like to use lights. That looks really cool as a practical. Some people like to have books or other things like that. I mean, the options are quite endless. But the point here is to really think about what practicals make sense for your day-to-day -day functioning. And then play around with it. What looks good, what doesn't. There's some trial error involved. But go ahead and think about the practicals within your scene. So a final way we can improve our virtual office is to improve our audio quality. This is super important, but often overlooked. I've heard somewhere that people are willing to sit through a bad movie, even if the visuals are bad, but they're not as willing to sit through a bad movie if the audio is bad. So I would imagine it's quite important 
And I don't know about you, but if you're ever in a Zoom meeting or if you're ever watching something where the audio is not working or it's crackly or something, it's almost intolerable. And now just like the other things, there are tons and tons of resources on Amazon and different external microphones with helpful reviews that you can look at. I'll post some down below. But yet again, there is another option that you probably have access to right now, and this is your smartphone. And in fact, it works the same exact way the webcam does when using your smartphone. The link that I'm gonna post down below for that works the same for audio. And believe it or not, the audio quality and the microphone within your smartphone, I have an iPhone, so that's the experience I'm speaking from, is much, much better than the audio quality that comes from your laptop. So go ahead and take the free upgrade and use your smartphone for both a webcam and the audio. I think you'll really like it. So that is it for today's video. Just a quick one today. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully that was helpful for you. And if you have other ways of configuring your virtual office or tips that you find to be really helpful, I would love to know down below in the description. But until next time, I look forward to seeing you soon. <music>